Hi everyone, I'm Dre, the host and founder of the Dragon Network. On our last video, we took a brief look at ICD-10 and DRG codes or groupers, and I want to continue the conversation around codification and standards with today's video. The two codification standards that I'd like to chat about this time are LOINC and SNOMED CT. So let's kick it off with LOINC. So in the early 90s, there was a desire to start exchanging clinical data electronically. So a team led by Clem J. McDonald at the Region Stripe Institute, and I always have trouble pronouncing that, so if I'm not saying it correctly, I apologize. So the team created a code set that could be used for the electronic exchange of laboratory data, and that code set is what's known as LOINC. So LOINC stands for Logical Observation, identifiers, names, and codes. Over the years, there's been some modifications and an expansion of LOINC so that it no longer just includes lab data. It also includes observations that relate to individuals. So for example, vital signs, document titles, patient outcomes, etc. So the purpose of the code set is to allow organizations to share data between them with a meaningful label. So that if there is an organization A that is calling something one thing and an organization B that has it labeled in a different way, there's a consistent label that can be used in the white code to exchange the data back and forth. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. So if we're looking at LOINC code 4548-4, which is for hemoglobin A1C, we may find that organization A actually has that written out and labeled in their system as hemoglobin A1C. But system B actually refers to it in their system as HBA1C. So they've shortened the acronym for some reason, and that's how they're presenting it within their application. So by connecting the 4548-4 LOINC code to the back of both of those tests, the two can exchange data with each other and understand that they're actually both referring to the same thing. So another example that we could look at is tobacco smoking status. So with this one, which is 72166-2, we can have tobacco smoking status as the label that's in system A and smoking status dash tobacco that's in system B. So you see, again, they're connected with that consistent link code so that they have the same meaning. By doing this, you actually have the ability over time to start trending your data together and having it be more meaningful, especially once you get to the layers of semantic or organizational interoperability. So if you want to learn more about the interoperability types, I have another video which I'll link to below. So as you can imagine, for an organization to attach LOINC codes to an entire data catalog, whether it be a lab catalog or to their vital sign catalog, for example, it could be a pretty big task for people to undertake. So the Region Stripe Institute actually has a mapping tool that is known as RELMA that can assist. So it can help you sort of get that initial piece of work done by suggesting codes along the way so that it's more of a validation effort on the organization's side with the appropriate SMEs, of course, as opposed to starting from scratch and having to dive through the entire catalog. If we're looking at the history of LOINC, its development in the early 90s was really focused on lab and wasn't necessarily utilized by a lot of people. But in 1999, we saw Health Level 7 or HL7 step in and actually identify LOINC as their recommended code center for the exchange of lab information, which set it down a path to be much more widely adopted. In 2009, in the US, you had another boost with LOINC when it was actually incorporated into the standard requirements for meaningful use. So today, the LOINC standard is used by 176 different countries around the world, and about 30 of those countries, give or take, actually have legislation in place or regulatory guidance in place that indicates that the LOINC standard must be used for the exchange of certain data types, such as lab data. So the data set continues to be maintained by the Region Stripe Institute. There's actually some countries that will add a second layer to this, so they'll use LOINC as their data set, and then they may add additional things that are more specific to their country. So Canada, for example, has an additional data set that's PCLOCD, which is based off of LOINC, but incorporates some things that are specific to Canada. So you may be wondering why I decided to put LOINC and SNOMED CT together. So I did that for a very good reason. Within the interoperability space, LOINC is actually connected to things that are observations or measurements or diagnostic type data elements. And SNOMED CT is actually attached as the response. So if you, if you think of it as a question and an answer, LOINC would be the question and SNOMED CT would be attached to the answer. So they're gonna marry up very, very well together, but they're looking at different things. So one is looking at the measurement itself and the other one is looking for the response. 
The acronym SNOMED CT actually stands for the Systemized Nomenclature of Medicine Clinical Terms. So it is used as a common language in a similar type fashion as LOINC, so it's a code set that's normalizing the data. And SNOMED CT is actually utilized by 80 countries. So not quite as many as LOINC, but SNOMED CT is definitely something that's used by a, a large volume of them and more and more are signing up sort of as time goes on. So the SNOMED reference terminology was actually created by the UK National Health Service, so NHS in the United Kingdom, and it's set up so that there's three main components. So there's cohorts, descriptions, and relationships. So using these three sections together in combination, you get a standardized clinical phrase. SNOMED CT codes can be used for things such as diagnoses and procedures, symptoms, family history, a wide spread of things where there's a clinical observation that's required. So the standard itself is now owned by the International Health Terminology Standards Organization, but it is maintained by the SNOMED nonprofit. So within the US, the SNOMED CT code set is actually required as part of the Promoting Interoperability Framework for Regulation. So for those of you unfamiliar, that's the rebranded name that they gave to the Meaningful Use Program. So within other countries, you're also going to see similar subsets that are developed off of the SNOMED CT main code set that define things a little more granularly for a particular country. So to see LOINC and SNOMED working together, let's take a look at that same tobacco smoking status LOINC code that we looked at earlier and review the corresponding SNOMED CT codes that may go with that question. So for this example, I've got five different SNOMED CT codes that we can use to reflect the smoking status of a tobacco user. So we've got smoker, current status unknown, unknown if ever smoked, heavy tobacco smoker, light tobacco smoker, or user of smokeless tobacco. And again, with the SNOMED CT, if an organization chooses to slightly alter the name of a data element, let's say, for example, the smoker current status unknown, they've decided to label it as tobacco smoking status unknown, they can do that as long as the SNOMED CT codes line up in the back. The exchange of clinical data between the organizations can still occur as long as the right interoperability is in place. So that's a quick look at what LOINC and SNOMED CT are and how they actually relate to each other. The code sets that are being developed around the world continue to evolve over time. We're slowly starting to see more countries utilizing the same standards. I do believe that the number of countries that have actually incorporated LOINC and SNOMED CT into their regulation, these are two that are going to be around for quite a while and ones that we should be familiar with. So I'll put the links in the description below if you want to do some more research. And with that, I'll wrap things up. So just a reminder, if you like the types of videos that I've been posting, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on your notifications so that you'll be notified the next time I post. Have a great day.